Hey, good evening, folks. Tonight, we're going to talk about the uh, bevel gear retaining nut on a 2015 Kawasaki Terex uh, 783cc V-twin, commonly referred to as an 800 motor. Um, I've got several other videos on the teardown to get to this piece here. I had the, the factory nut that's on top here, my fingers pointing to, actually backed out, causing slack. Uh, this is the actual output drive bevel output drive gear bevel gear and it rotates on the output driven bevel gear it's located down there anyway just wanted to give y'all some tips on this thing factory specs says to torque this nut around 147 148 foot pounds which is pretty substantial uh, they do make a kawasaki sells a spanner wrench which is actually a socket i don't know why it's called a wrench but throughout the automotive world that's what they refer to the sockets as a spanner wrench and um, kawasaki sells one it's about 159 dollars i tried looking on amazon um, kawasaki lists that spanner nut as a 50 millimeter i ordered from amazon a motion pro dual sided 50 millimeter on this side as you can see it's got the tabs and it's supposed to line up with the slots on the nut this side is like 36 millimeter unfortunately somebody's wrong because that's not 50 or this is not 50 wouldn't work and of course that that socket was about 40 bucks online a lot cheaper than kawasaki's so what i end up doing is getting a uh a one inch and a one and eleven sixteenths socket like here and basically that nut just barely fits inside there and i bought some three sixteenths square stock As you can see just regular square stock zinc plated actually fits perfectly in the slots on the nut here well if i can get it down there you can see that and what I did is I took four of them there's four slots on the nut and I actually kept part of it square which the the end that goes into the tab here and each of the tabs is still going to be square if that'll focus and then the the piece that actually the top side here this thing's not wanting to focus the top side of this, this square tubing has been rounded so that it fits. So the, it's not a perfect point in that socket, but it's more rounded so that they fit there. And I made them, I, I, I ground them to where it's a pretty tight fit because like I say, we are torquing this thing to between 145 and 150 foot pounds of torque. And uh, it did work, uh, no issues. Uh, I had to use the vise obviously. And the other tool you'll need on the back side of the the bevel driven drive gear and so you got a hex slot here and that's actually 17 millimeter that's what that is so i used that for that in and what i actually did because i initially took this piece out of the socket and tried to get the vise to hold that end so that the bevel gear was kind of positioned like this inside the vise and it just the vice didn't have enough uh there's too much leverage on the vice and it caused the jaws to flex on the vice so what i ended up doing is i put the put the hex back in its appropriate socket and i set the ratchet up half inch drive ratchet i set it in the vice like this tightened it down and uh, actually I'm gonna show you real quick. Anyway, tightened it down like that, snugged it up pretty good. Bevel gear sits on there like that. And I used my, my socket on there and I incrementally stepped it up about every 25 or so foot pounds until I got a click on the torque wrench all the way up to 145 excuse me 147 but one thing kawasaki in the user's manual states is to use 
Loctite 271 or equivalent on the thread, on that spanner nut, retaining nut, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did notice on the on the brand new nut because that's only a, that's a one time use part. You can't really tell, but there is a it's like a sheet metal section of the nut that actually part helps lock it in. And I think once you use the nut once, it kind of takes the uh, the spring loaded uh, capability out of the nut at that point. But the brand new nut I have sitting inside does have some kind of red substance on the inside threads. But I'm gonna go ahead and do like the service manual said and use, I ended up getting Permatex, which is the same rating as the Loctite number 271. This is Permatex 27100. And you're probably thinking, well, how the hell, why don't you already have it on there if it's together? This is the old nut. This is the new bevel gear, two new bearings. And what the manual said to do is to get it torqued down using the old nut to make sure your your preload, which is the amount of force it takes to spin this once it's torqued down is, is in the right specs, which I haven't checked that yet, but it feels close to the same. And of course, you need to mount it in your engine case, which I already have, torque it down, and uh, check for backlash, which that's why I have my dial indicator set up here. I've already done that. I actually have about four 0.0045, four and a half thousandths of an inch of backlash, which is within specs on that. And backlash, in case you don't know, is uh, the amount of slack between the two gears and measured in thousandths of an inch. Um, I did take all the gears out the transmission just to make sure I didn't have any damage in there. Um, then cleaning up the case. Getting ready to start putting it back together. Uh, like I say, I'm gonna check the preload on the bearing. I just need to find a spring scale to check that. And again, preload, all it is is the amount of force measured in inch pounds that it takes to move that gear once it's been torqued into place. So too much preload and you actually damage the bearing over time. But anyway, I just thought I'd share this. Uh, again, 3 sixteenths square stock fits on these grooves in a spanner nut. Um, this particular socket I got from Tractor Supply. I don't, my toolkit don't have anything that big. Hell, the biggest I have in SAE probably goes up to inch or inch and a quarter. And then my metric end ain't even close to that. Now that's 20, 28, but Anyway, it, though, that happened to work with that combination. Now, I don't know if if I'd have had a socket with perfectly uh, perfect points in there, if that would have made it made it better or worse, or if it would even worked, I don't know. But all I know is that it happened to, I was at Tractor Supply today, and I just happened to be thinking. I found the square stock, brought the nut up there, stuck it in there, and I said, man, that may work. And surprisingly, it held up to the 150 pounds. And, uh, Again, I just cut them, cut them to about three quarter of an inch each, and uh, made it to where it's pretty snug. I laid them up here, and then kind of help. They kind of put them at an angle, kind of like this. I'm not gonna do all of them right now. Kind of put them all at an angle, all four of them, and kind of slowly put the socket on. And as of course I'm, I have two hands at that point. I kind of start straightening them up and the goal is once I get them straight, they need to rest on the edge of that bearing right there, the inner, the inner edge of race. That's where they'll end up resting right there. And then if you look, they're actually resting on this I got a piece of a bearing here from the other one. That's what they're resting on. By the way, I use this as a uh, bearing driver a little bit. Um, also when I was assembling it, one of the things I did is I put the, uh, bevel gear in the freezer and I heated the, the bearing, the one that goes on the end down here, heated the bearing in the oven to 200 degrees 
uh, did it left them in there for an hour and that sucker just slipped right on there so anyway that's it we're going back together i hope <sighs> it's been a uh just a wonderful little project i'm mean, a pain in the butt to be honest with you but hopefully we can get this thing back together this week while i'm doing it you know i'm replacing head gaskets and gaskets front and rear seal on both output on the output shaft on both ends <sighs> yeah it's been crazy so one of the things you can do if your preload is is not right on here there's actually underneath this bearing there's actually a collar and a shim that go on top of the uh that go on this shaft uh, located under the bearing there's different thicknesses kawasaki offers um, that'll adjust that obviously if you need more or less preload you just have to determine which which size you can you can choose bigger or smaller shims um, over here on your backlash if it's not right you would actually pull this off real easily, which in my other videos I show you, there's another shim behind this. That's That affects backlash more than anything, is this driven gear. And then you're, another thing you're supposed to do is you gotta check the tooth contact between the two sets of teeth. Uh, you can use marking compound, roll the gear around several times, see how the tooth contact's right or not. If it's not, you would adjust this shim here, which goes underneath the drive bevel gear so tonight that's where we're going to be i'm going to hope the tooth contacts right and i'm hoping the uh preload is good and if that's good we're going to button this thing up tonight i'm going to take this the old nut off and apply some 271 lock tight or thread locker excuse me not to it's permatex not lock tight put it on that shaft tighten it down Torque it to 148, 147 foot-pounds. Throw that bad boy in this case. And at that point, the problem part is corrected, and we're going to start going back together. Um, there's a good video on YouTube about this transmission. I believe the old boy's name is... Man, I apologize if I'm wrong. I want to say James Boudreau. He's got a real good explanation and assembly of this transmission. He's got a damn good um, video on checking the backlash with a dial indicator like I've done here. So I'm not, not going to make a video on putting this thing back together. I could take it apart real quick, pull all the gears, put them back in. But again, I believe it's James Boudreau. Um, and again, I apologize, Mr. Boudreau, if I'm mis mispronouncing your name or miscalling your first name, but excellent video. You helped me a lot when I pulled my transmission apart. Um, of course, I, I video almost everything I do just so I have something to reference back to, but I didn't even have to go back to my videos. I just looked at yours and very good explanation, very good detail and all that. So anyway, hope that project gets done and maybe we can start having some fun. Get out here on all these damn buggies and four-wheelers and dirt bikes. Get this pile of debris from this 800cc motor off this off my son's four-wheeler. Other boys' four-wheelers here. And then get back in action. Of course, we got another project looming right here, sitting next to the T4. I need to replace that dirt bike tire. That sucker there. Anyway, get some riding in. Check those pumpkins out over there. All right, thank y'all. Good night. <laughs>